The main question that I want to pose to you today is, is a parabola, such as the shape shown on the left, the same as an ellipse, the shape shown on the right? And the answer is no. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, please subscribe. Now, actually, there is a little bit more I wanted to say about the topic. You see, it turns out that although from the normal kind of uh, Cartesian geometry perspective, these two conic shapes are very different. From a projective geometry perspective, they have a lot of similarity. Okay, and so last time, amongst other things, I was talking about what it looks like to be stood on a plane which is, say, tiled with hexagons. And if you're looking at a plane like that from within, what kind of perspective do you have? What, what does the picture look like? And now I want to sort of sidestep a little bit. So I'm going to come back, but I want to sidestep to the discussion of conics again. So um, I already talked a bit about conics. Um, they're very interesting in themselves. Certainly the way the Greeks looked at them was very interesting as slices of a cone. So remember, we have the ellipse, of which the circle could be considered an example. We have the parabola, and we have the hyperbola by Mark Brody. And this is just fantastic because it's like something you can load up on your browser. I'll put the web address in the details. And it gives you a completely visual, mechanical um, sort of definition of all of these different conics. Not only something that you can remember, but something that you can actually use to construct. So what's an ellipse? Well, basically, given a couple of focus points, or foci, they're labelled F1 and F2 here, an ellipse is defined with respect to a constant. And you can set that constant to be any positive number. And then it's defined to be the set of all points P, such that the distance from P to one focus plus the distance from P to the other focus is always constant. OK, so basically it's um, well, we can just shift it. Let me shift this point P around and you'll see what I mean. See, as we change P. It's going around and around this ellipse. In fact, it's sort of sweeping out or defining this ellipse. But as it goes. Um, you can perhaps see that the total length of this red line segment plus the total length of this blue line segment are always going to be the same and um, I'll try and convince you of that later with an actual physical model. Okay then so now let's move on to the other extreme case which is the parabola okay so the parabola is again defined with respect to a pair of focus points f1 and f2 and this time, it's defined as the set of all points P such that the distance from P to one focus minus the distance from P to the other focus is always equal up to a minus sign or minus two. Um, so you can see here that the blue length is longer. And as we change the position of the point P, the blue length is getting longer and longer, but the red length is growing in a similar way, so that the difference between the two lengths remains the same. And so that's the definition of a hyperbola. And later on I shall give some mechanical demonstrations of this, so it should become a bit more clear exactly what's going on. Um, so finally, we have this kind of in-betweener case, which is the parabola. Okay, so the parabola can be defined by 
having a focus point, just one focus point, F, and a line, which we call the directrix. And then it's said to be the set of all points for which the distance to the focus point is equal to the distance to this line, to this directrix. And so when I speak of a distance from a point to a line, I mean like a perpendicular distance. So we think about um, if you're going to draw a line at right angles to the directrix, this red line, how long is it? Well, however long it is, that should be the same length as this blue line linking up this point P to the focus F. And if that's true, then you're on the parabola. So we have our pins slash toothpicks and um, we have our string. So now it's very easy to draw the actual ellipse. All we do, hold down the paper so it doesn't move and we're just going to move this pen around so that this string is always taut. So if we keep moving this pen around so that this string is always taut then we shall indeed get an ellipse. So this is my ever so sophisticated hyperbola making machine. So what's the meaning of all this? Well the pen does the writing, the pen actually draws the hyperbola and these two things here these are basically the foci. So let's see if uh, this actually does what it's supposed to do. Well, that looks quite hyperbolic to me. Okay, so it's hardly a rigorous demonstration, but what do you expect from something which is built out of toothpicks and sponges? Okay, so we have a configuration here. Um, where we have a load of circles and we want to draw a parabola. So a parabola is defined with respect to a focus, in this case this blue point B, and also with respect to a line, in this case this blue line J. So we want to find some points on this parabola. So how do we do it? Well remember the definition of a parabola is that a point on the parabola when it's equidistant from the focus and the directrix line. In other words, a point P is on the parabola when the distance from P to the focus equals the perpendicular distance from P to this directrix line. So can we find some points like that? Well, what about if we have a look at this horizontal line here? How about this point? I'll colour it red. Well, let's say that this small circle has a radius of 1. So the difference between the radii of subsequent circles is 1. And so you can see that this red point here is two units away from the focus and it's two units away from the directrix. So indeed it should lie on the parabola. Let's try and find some more points on this parabola. Maybe you'd like to pause the video and see if you can find any places where two circles intersect that actually correspond to points on this parabola. Well, okay, I'll see if I can find one. Um, how about the place where these two circles intersect? Is that going to be a point on the... Let's talk about point L. Is L going to be a point on the parabola? Well, what's the distance from L to the focus? We can do that by counting the circle shells. So it's one, two, three, four five units away from a focus. How far away is it from the directrix? Well, to figure out that, we can draw this line here that's perpendicular, 
and the distance from L to the directrix is going to be equal to the distance from this place here, uh, where it meets the horizontal line, to the directrix, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So yes, indeed, this point L is a point on our hyperbola, sorry, on our parabola. as is this point K by symmetry. Are there any more points which would lie on our parabola? Indeed there are. It turns out that if we take the intersections of both of these largest circles, again we get points on the parabola. So let's just check. The distance from N to the focus is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And the distance from N to the directrix is the distance from H to the directrix, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Great. So we have two more points on the parabola. More than enough information for us to compute the curve algebraically, but why not just use the GeoGebra drawing package? So it's got this nice function to draw a parabola, select a point in a directrix. Okay, here's our focus point. Here's our directrix line, and here's our parabola. Okay, so we've just drawn a parabola with respect to this left focus point B. And now what we're going to do is draw an ellipse. An ellipse is defined with respect to two focus points. Um, this left one B and this right one F, these blue points here. So it's defined to be the set of all points P such that the distance from P to B plus the distance from P to F is always the same, okay? So to start drawing our ellipse, let's pick a point. Let's say this one here. And we'll paint it green. What about having a look at this point here. This point is lying on one circular shell further away from point B. So its distance from B is one larger, but it's also lying on a circular shell which is a bit closer. It's the next closest circular shell to this rightmost focus point F. So um, if I just carry on quickly, maybe you'll see the idea. Basically, as long as you keep um, choosing these places where the circles intersect so that you're sort of moving, she moving circular shells away from one foci and moving circular shells towards the other, then the points you pick will indeed be on a focus, will be indeed beyond an ellipse. Okay, so now what I want to do is to draw a hyperbola. And notice I've added some extra circles because I think that's going to be helpful. So I want to draw a hyperbola which passes through this point here, J1, which I shall call a yellow. Now, we have these two focus points. The left one is this blue point B, and the right one is this blue point F. And the definition of a hyperbola is that it's 
a point's going to be a point p will be on the hyperbola when the distance from p to one focus minus the distance from p to the other focus is always constant at least up to a minus sign okay so how do we find our next point on the hyperbola well we want it to be let's say we want it to, to be one unit further away from v so it ought to be lying on the next circular shell and we also want it to be further away from the rightmost focus point f so we want it to be lying on this circular shell as well so it should be there And we can continue in this manner, moving one circular shell away each time. And hopefully you can see that as we do this, we're getting further away from both. And we can also do it going inwards. So we'll move one unit closer to B and one unit closer to F. And again, the difference between the distances um, of the point from the foci will remain the same okay and that should be enough so let's just check now that we have a proper hyperbola so if we just um, use the clever algebra function it says select two foci and a point on the hyperbola so foci number one, foci number two, point on the hyperbola. There we go. And we shall color it yellow for good luck. So notice that there's actually two branches of this hyperbola. And the reason for that, I suppose, is because um, we ought to think of this with respect to the absolute value of the um, distance of the difference between the distances, and that gives us these two branches of the hyperbola, and that also matches up quite well with our definition of um, making a hyperbola by slicing one of these kind of um, double cones, if you like. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is to look at this kind of grid system which is normally used for geometry uh, you know the Cartesian geometry of Descartes and um, I'm going to draw the standard kind of parabola now as I said before I don't want to rely too much on equations so I'm going to do it in a little bit of a well I'm going to do it in terms of foci and directrics like I was talking about before um, but why am I doing this? Well, the reason I'm doing this is really the whole point of this video. Now, you see a grid here in front of you, presumably on a computer. And what I'd like you to do is imagine instead that, it, that you're actually stood on this grid, that it's something like a chessboard or something, an infinite chessboard that you're walking around on. And that all of these points and lines and things are drawn on it. So imagine you're walking around on this giant plane and think about what it looks like. So that's the kind of perspective we want to be taking. And I'm going to draw this parabola and when, then we're going to think about what it would look like if you actually stood on the actual plane looking at it. And the result should probably surprise you. It surprised me. Okay then, so... This particular parabola, it has a directrix given by this blue line here, which um, is 0.25 units down and it's horizontal. And there's a focus here, which is right in the middle above the origin, so it has the Cartesian coordinates 0. 0.25 because it's zero units to the right and 0.25 units up so okay what are the actual points on this parabola can we find some well it turns out that we can i'm just going to draw them on and i'll leave it to you as an exercise to actually 
and verify that these are the correct points. So you probably recognize this curve already. It's what you'd normally call the curve y equals x squared. In other words, it's the parabola defined by saying that the height you are above the origin is equal to the amount you are right of the origin times the amount you are right of the origin. When I say amount, I mean distance. Okay. So, for example, 1, 1, and we have the point 2, 4, because 4 is 2 times 2, and we have the point 3, 9, because 9 is 3 times 3, and so on. So it's a fairly standard shape. Okay, so what I want to show you is that we don't have to think of it in such um, numerical terms. If we just have this focus point here, which is a quarter of a unit up and centered up on the origin with respect to the left right. And we also have this horizontal line, which is a quarter of a unit down from the origin. Well, if we use our line as our directrix and our point as our focus, then we can just produce this parabola straight off. So pick the focus, pick the directrix line. And as you can see, that produces just what we wanted, this nice big parabola. Anyway, I know this is the proper smooth curve, but I'd like to think more about discretizing it. Now here's the thought experiment. Imagine as I say that you are a little man who's walking around on this grid. So you're actually walking on top of this grid. It's not in front of you, it's underneath you. And you can see this parabola stretching off into the sort of horizon, as far as you can see. Now the question is, what would it look like? And the answer might surprise you. We're going to figure that out using projective geometry. We're going to suppose now that we're stood looking at this grid and we're going to draw out this parabola. And so what I've done here with these red points is plotted out the analogies of what I was drawing before. So this would be like, let's say this is the origin, 0, 0. So now to get to the next point on our discretized parabola, we want to be moving 1 to the right and 1 times 1 up. That gets us here. And now to get to the next point, we want to be moving 2 to the right and 2 times 2 up, which is 1, 2, 3, 4. That gets us here. Except, actually, we ought to point them like that. And we shall have to zoom in. But we also ought to join this point 24 with this point 39. And so forth. And we basically do the same on the other side of a parabola. So this is one step to the left, one step up. This is two steps to the left and four steps up, three steps to the left and nine steps up, and so forth. Now, here's what's interesting. I think this is very interesting. Let me just zoom out so we can see this a bit better. The thing is that what do you think happens as we continue to draw this parabola? 
I mean, it takes quite a lot of effort to put in all these grid lines, but hopefully you can see already that these two lines, the final two pieces we've drawn, are actually starting to converge. And if you think about the actual parabola, um, if you think about the way it looks on an ordinary Cartesian plot, you have this thing where the lines sort of start to go horizontal. In other words, they start to go upwards. And we know what happens to horizontal lines on a projective drawing. They meet on the origin. So what's actually going to happen eventually, this is a gross approximation, but they're actually going to end up meeting And zoom in. They're actually going to end up meeting on the horizon eventually. So let me just So I've greyed out these last couple of lines because they're not exactly accurate. But basically, as we continue this parabola, it's actually going to end up looking like an ellipse. That seems quite peculiar, right? What we're actually getting is an ellipse. So the way a parabola looks um, when you're stood looking at it from the plane that it's drawn in is elliptical because the points end up meeting at the horizon. So this is one of the most, well, this is sort of a, a glimpse at one of the most interesting insights of projective geometry into conic curves that basically one conic curve can look like another conic curve. A parabola can look like an ellipse. And in fact, what we'll see later on when we sort of really get down to the brass tacks of what projective geometry is all about is we shall see that, in fact, all of these conics are basically in some sense the same in projective geometry.